John Sidalides is a geopolitical strategist. We look at a situation like this, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, and I can't help but think that uh, when you pour enough gasoline into an area, all it takes is a match to set it ablaze. Is, is that a fair analogy for what uh, both the Russians and the United States are staring at, including uh, NATO in this region? Well, I think so. I think so. Um, it, it is dangerous. Um, I think the thing that makes it less dangerous is that um, I think Putin understands very well, uh, he, has, he has a good picture of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, this is a, a strange thing to say, but I kind of trust that Putin is not going to let it get out of control. I can't say the same about the Brits, NATO, or the United States. Why, why would you say that? That's fascinating. That's fascinating. My sense is that the leadership in the United States particularly, and that is um, what drives, I think, NATO and, and the Brits in, in a great many ways, that that U.S. leadership, if, if it's Biden or Biden's people um, or his appointees, I don't see competence there. I don't see um, foreign policy competence, and I don't see military strategic competence. Um, with Putin, his track record is long. He's been in charge for a long time, and I do see competence there. So if I have to trust something, I'm going to go with competence. We don't have it on our side, in my opinion. Fascinating uh, to hear you say that. Uh, John, I made the example for our viewers earlier, just uh, for comparative purposes, that uh, what if this happened here? What, what if the Russians all of a sudden showed up with 32 warships to do exercises off the coast of Louisiana? How would we respond? And why is that not a good comparison if it's not? Well, if we take a look at history, and that's always a helpful guide, Rick, uh, we look at what happened with the Cuban Missile Crisis when the Soviet Union, Russia under communism, did just that back in the early 1960s. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the closest that the United States and Russia have ever come to nuclear war. And just several weeks ago, the Russian Navy was patrolling uh, several miles in international waters west of Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean. And these NATO exercises were conducted in either international waters in the Black Black Sea or in Ukraine's national water. So I would posit that what we really have here is a, a military manifestation of the profound mistrust between Moscow and Washington bilaterally and Moscow and NATO on a more uh, sort of general basis. And this also reflects the divide, I would say, Rick, within the NATO alliance between countries that are somewhat more laissez-faire about the security issue from Russia towards Europe, such as Germany, France, Portugal, and Spain. And those either former Soviet republics up in the Baltics or countries such as Poland, which have an increasingly influential voice in Washington, that are very much concerned about Russia's activities in Ukraine, in Belarus, and directly against a number of NATO countries, mm. including Bulgaria, Romania, and Turkey, all of which also have extensive coastlines and national waters in the Black Sea. Colonel, let me ask you a question about our military and the fact that it seems to be everywhere. And... Well, I hate to put it in these terms, but it almost looks like we're out there picking fights or looking for fights all the time. What's it like to be a leader in a military that appears, at least to the rest of the world, to be doing that from time to time? Our own country, which we love and adore. Yeah, uh, well, I've, I've been out of the military for a while. I've been retired for some years now. Um, I imagine it's, for some people in the military, for some of our generals and our admirals, it's quite enjoyable. It's quite fun for many people that find the military to be a career that they that they enjoy and pursue. Um, war gaming is kind of like the same as war. The game part often takes precedent. Um, you know, we like to think, oh, it's patriotic. It's about defending our country. But many generations, including my own, uh, in this country haven't seen the United States defend our country. So what we see the military do is a lot of gamesmanship. Huh. So. To that extent, they're doing it. They're doing it in lots of different places. Certainly, they're learning. They're getting their ribbons, their promotions, their new transfers. It's a wonderful place to be to have fun. And I, I did have fun in the military. I certainly enjoyed it. But, but in terms of the necessity, the affordability, um, that kind of thing, it, it's it's a problem. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know what I don't know how they justify. What is the mission? What is the mission to, to terrorize countries to start wars? I don't know. It's a good question. You can tell me. It, and maybe it's something that we need to come to grips with as we move forward. But it's always important to have these conversations and maybe to question ourselves because that's what makes us better. 
It's what I tell my kids, and it's what we do here on this newscast. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the conversation. Thanks for joining us both. Appreciate it.